Hello and welcome back to Pathfinder. So, last time nothing bad happened whatsoever, I don't know what you're talking about. This time, we're going to head out and we're going to go back to where we just were and we're going to see what's going on there. Although, I think we might have some Crusade stuff which is about to trigger, so if that is about to trigger then we'll probably do that first and then go somewhere. Uh, but anyway, we'll see. Has the rift got any larger? No. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's head down here and head out. Let I think we can go to crusade mode from the world map, so that's probably our quickest way there. Um, oh, it took Arushalay out of our party because she died. She didn't technically die, she um, just got teleported back here, but it took her out of our party. Uh, let's mix things up a little bit. Let's mix things up. And really, the only way to mix things up is to take Ember out and put Nenio in, but hey... It's something a little bit different. I still think that Wolgif is cool to have around. We could potentially be thinking about switching in with Camellia. I mean, she does need to level up, so maybe maybe it's time. Maybe we'll just switch them out as well. Gives us a little bit of a different party composition. And because we're bringing Nenio, we're bringing along somebody else who has haste. Um, so that means that he's no longer um, like needed because we've got stealth, we've got trickery, and we've got haste. I mean, I did also notice in our last one that Arushali also has a bit of stealth and trickery, so if we can improve that a little bit, that will actually be quite good for our party compositions, because then it's not, do we take Camellia Wolgif? It's, do we take Camellia Wolgif or Arushali? And that opens up a lot more options, but anyway, uh, let's go with this for just now. So we got a couple of level ups to do, basically, is what we're getting at. Okay, so once it loads in... Uh, let's go to... Ooh, we also got some of this as well. Let's go to Crusade Management. We might have to go immediately back. Okay. Logistics Council. The success of military action depends on a regular supply of everything troops need and the judicious distribution of resources. Logistic Council, made up of experienced officers, will ensure that there is no chaos in the army while the commander's attention is focused on the front line. Cool. Another one popped up, but, I mean, I guess we didn't get it. There we go. Um, warriors stuck in the middle of nowhere, um, fighting vicious monsters have to remember why they, they're fighting and what they're sacrificing their lives for. Yes, this was the cleric's praising one. So our morale should be 20. It is. We're going to get the fate of the soul, uh, of the soul shear, um, in one day. Okay. That's just going to give us a relic, though. I'm not too worried about that. What are the things that we got available? So we got a logistics one for Bell of Mercy. Okay. What's that give us? Uh, plus one AC against demon units attacks. Okay. Uh, these are all logistics. What are we missing for it? Um, we're missing material points. Okay. Fair enough. Um, this one is diplomatic. We can't do that because something's already being done, but it costs 100. Okay. Um, that is the same thing. That's the same thing. Effectively, these are all exactly the same, as is that. They're all just... It's, um, spend some material points and get a relic. Okay. Let's do Bell of Mercy while we're here. I don't believe it actually costs us anything. It's only seven days to do, so that's fine. A holy relic of Desna has been found in the ruins of the fortress near the Green Gates. The chime of the bell ringing out once more after many years of silence will fill mortal souls with faith and hope for victory. But extracting the holy relic from the ruins and taking it to Dresden will require the combined efforts of an entire unit. Cool. Seven days, we have nothing else that needs to be done there. Seems absolutely fine. Uh, I'm not going to stay around for the fate of the Soul Shear because I'm not that worried about it. I don't think it's going to be necessarily something that we need to worry about. We can issue another decree while we're out. It's all fine. I'm also going to let our material points build up a little bit before I think about spending them. Because next time we go to build, I want to make sure that we're building things that are worthwhile. And if we have more resources, we can choose basically whatever we like, which I think is good. Right, let's close that. Um, let's do our military first, then we'll do some level ups. I was thinking how I wanted to handle it. So first things first, I need to buy the all three of these. Um, do we already have an army that has them? Oh, also Inquisitors, Conscripts, and Sorcerers. Interesting. Inquisitors look really nice, actually, but you want to get 14 of them. Okay. Uh, do we already have an... Oh, we already have a couple of Inquisitors here. We could buy some more to go into that. How are we looking on finance points? Pretty good, actually. Yeah, we can do that. Alright, big DPS, you're first. Uh, I will buy the shield bearers for you. Because we can, basically. They just go into the group. That's fine. Um, alley battalions off and about. Second army. 
Uh, I'm going to buy you these guys, the Mounted Scouts, just to add into the pile. And not necessarily that we're going to use them, but just so we have them. The last one are archers. Do we have any unit with archers in it? You have archers. Okay. So I probably want to send you down south to that battalion. Yeah. This one here. Um, that almost looks like that's going to connect in round here once we get rid of that army. Maybe give us a, a shortcut round. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, let's see where else we're what else we could do with them. We could send them up this way towards like these demon armies. That would probably be fine. Yeah, I think I'm gonna send you back to Dresden. Yeah, I'm gonna send you back to Dresden. That's fine. So we'll send them off. Right. Then I'm gonna go to recruit. I, I just want to recruit into. A, okay, I'll recruit into this army and then get rid of them. That's fine. So recruit. Then we select that army. We then say, actually, hmm, how do we do this? <laughs> uh, that one? Nope. This one? Nope. Uh, oh, it's this one, right? There we go. It is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. That's fine. Let's do this. Double click the archers out. The archers are then going to make their way south. Um, did they just hit the other army? I believe they did. Perfect. So they'll just merge them in. That's absolutely fine. Um, now, the question we have now is what do we do with the Inquisitors? Do they go into an army yet? I don't think we are ready to replace the champions. We're not ready to replace the Hell Knights. Although we could potentially because... There aren't that many of them anymore, so we could put them back and then take the Inquisitors out, although there aren't that many Inquisitors either, but they do more damage. Hmm. Okay, let's first of all go Inquisitors. I realized I can do this as well. Uh, let's buy these guys. Yep, just straight buy them. Um, now, they are locked, apparently. Cannot be refreshed until next week. Interesting. Um, we don't need either of those. I'm just going to search for new units. Okay, so we didn't get anything. We got clerics and we got sorcerers. We don't have either of those right now, so I don't see a reason to get any more of them. Right, so we now have 26 in here. What would be nice is if it gave us like a military score. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but it said like, this army is worth X number of points, right? So if it said like 26 of these is worth like 100 points, and then it said, ah, but um, 100 of these or sorry, like 26 of these equals 200 points or something, right? Then I'd be able to compare them at a glance. The problem is, right now I'm like, well, this has 26 hit points and it does 19 to 29, but this army, they have 100 hit points and they do 20 to 25, so how? it's like this kind of weird, you know, back and forth stats thing, but actually it could be a lot easier. Hmm. I could also replace the archers. They don't do that much damage right now. Yeah, I could replace the archers with inquisitors. Uh, that could be interesting. What happens to this battalion? I guess I can check it on this number at the side if I create a new army out of just the archers. Because then it should tell me... Is this just a general's level or do the archers literally add nothing? No, the general's level 7. Okay. I was confused there for a second. So I took the archers out and it thinks the army is the exact same strength. Well, that's not a great sign for the archers, if I'm honest with you. Um, let's see. I could put these guys in as well. They're not that bad. I think I'm going to put the Inquisitors in, though. Right, let's move them south. Then I'm going to merge the Inquisitors into this army. Cool. They're still level 5, but that's okay. I think these guys will end up being better, maybe? I don't know. Possibly worse. But we'll go with them for just now. Uh, and it's just melee. I'm going to split up our party a little bit so we don't get hit by AoE stuff. Sure. Although usually that uh, the bottom of the map is empty. So maybe something like that. Cool. Right, I don't really need to worry about our armies anymore. Can I make a second army yet? Yes, yes I can. Uh, I think I can take some and make a second army. So let's move second army south. 
Uh, you're gonna merge with you. Okay. So that gives us Crusader Army 5, which is 3 strength. I could maybe put the Shield Bearers in it. That would give us a very boring army, but I think that might be the best way to handle it. Yeah. yeah. So let's grab the Shield Bearers. To Crusader Army 2. Crusader Army 2 will then head south. Uh, we will then stick you into this army. Cool. That moves you to a 4 strength army. Uh, that means that two small and big DPS are the only ones still at home, and then this army is the one that we could potentially move somewhere. Um, I'm going to call you the Boring... The Boring Army? There we go. Boring Army. Uh, and what's Boring Army's job? Uh, is to seek out weak enemies and defeat them. Although we need a general as well if we want to put maybe do that. There, there aren't actually that many weak armies. We might actually need them to wait a little bit as well. But yeah, maybe Boring Army can be fine for just now. Yeah. Do we have another general? Um, hmm. We get Scorching Ray guy. That would give them Master of Maneuver and give them another unit and Scorching Ray. Uh, how much does it cost? 12,000? Okay, well. Maybe we can think about it later. Um, big DPS guy, what do you... You've got Master of Maneuver. If I was to put you on the other army, that would actually be better. Alright, big DPS is going to go south. And we're going to do some creative accounting here. There we are. So, you're not allowed to move a general to a new army. However, what you are totally allowed to do is move all of the troops from one army to the other and then move all the troops back. I mean, you are able to move uh, uh, generals. It just uses time. But, yeah, we can skip the time by doing this. Now, do I want to put any of these guys in that army? The marksmen, there's only 10 of them, but they do do a lot of damage. Uh, there's only 5 rangers. They, there's really not enough of them. Bandits? Shortbow, 22, blah, 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 blah. These guys would be better if I was putting in just one of them as an individual unit. Do I have anybody else who could fit into our unit? Also, I like that big DPS is now that one. 25 spearmen? They're not that good. Paladins? There's only two of them. <laughs> Rogues? They're not that good. Uh, let's go back in here. No, don't do that. Go back in here, click that button. There we go. I'm going to give you the marksman. That puts you up to a strength 5 army. Cool. That was kind of what I was hoping for there. Okay, so now we have another strength 5 army. This is now a boring squad. Uh, this is now... I don't know. Right. I don't know. Move back into here. Too small. I don't know. Alley Battalion, Boring Squad. Boring Squad can now go out. It's level 5, which means we could go and take on level 5 armies in theory. Which might actually be a good thing for us to do. Okay, and the Alley Battalion can potentially go and try and take on some of the level 6 with our explosive stuff. But not that one because it has a leader. So maybe I want to start moving my way over here with Alley Battalion. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe this army? No, we already tried that one, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I might send Boring Squad up to fight that one, potentially. And then we'll send Ali Battalion over to the left to try and get some of this stuff explored and dealt with. I don't know. I'm just trying to make it so we actually have squads going out and doing things rather than just never interacting with the Crusade map mode. Cool. Right. Now back to the bit of the game, which is different. <laughs> Uh, this bit. Right, so first of all, I've just noticed. There we go. So now we have freedom of movement reapplied. That's a weird bug that um, you need to reapply it. It's probably the exact same bug as us having to reapply the um, like this thing every single time. So, yeah, odd. Anyway, um, and then we're going to level up. Now, let's just look at our characters and work out what we were doing. So you have a uh, mythic path is abundant casting. You have spell penetration mythic. Nice. Spell book wise, what are we doing with you? Lots and lots of kind of single target spells. Lots of fire, lots of electricity. Um, lots of shouts with phantasmal killers and obsidian flows. 
Yeah, the shadowy vacations, the phantasmal webs, the ice prisons. Okay, I have a rough idea about what we're doing here. Um, now, I don't have any enduring spells with you. No. Okay. That's fine. Right, let's level you up. So, first things first, uh, we get level 6 spells. Sounds good to me. Next thing, level, 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 level. We have a spare point. Are we doing lore nature with our spare point? We probably shouldn't. I know I've got points in it, but let me let me read what it says again. Give us ability to cure disease. Delays fatigue while traveling on the world map. Um, allows a recall knowledge about dungeons or nature. Yeah, so that's that's not really that good. Um, hmm. We could level perception, which is probably a better move. Um, we could also, I'm trying to see if there's anything else we could level that'd be useful, that has like another effect. No, I don't think any of these really have another effect that's going to be that useful. I mean, this would be fine if we put three points in and we were ever considering to do use defensive maneuvers, but we're not. I'm going to put it into perception now. I think that's going to be more useful if we keep doing that. Rather than lower nature. I don't think lower nature is going to be useful because we have 17 in it. I mean, at what point is this going to be a relevant stat? Yeah, okay. Feet. Greater spell focus so we can get even more uh, on our illusion spells, which could be okay. Um, we could get meta magic. What's magical tail? Oh yeah, this is this one where I'm like, it doesn't really... It's not as good as you think it would be. Um... Spell specialization. You get one spell and you cast that spell with normal power than usual. You treat your cast level as being two levels higher. That's way too specific. Um, we could go for something. Is there any of these stats that we're not good at? Uh, Arcana, uh, we're fine at. World, you're much better, but we're fine at. Religion. Religion, we basically just have Sela. We could push that up a little bit more, potentially. Use Magic Device. You're you're pretty much our best one here. Uh, but there's not really a lot we can do with that. Yeah, there's no real skill I think we need you to have. Elemental Focus, I mean, it's fine, but I don't think it's what we're looking for. I think what I might do... Um, I was just thinking maybe like Brew Potions or something. But, um, well, maybe. Of, of up to level 3 during camping. No, maybe spell focus is the one. Maybe we go illusion. We add to the difficulty class. It is actually useful for illusion spells. Because a lot of them just don't work if they pass the saving throw. So, yeah, let's add a plus 1 to difficulty class. Okay, sure. Spells. We get uh, 2 level 6 spells. Phantasmal purification is the one it suggests for us here. All enemies within a 30 foot burst centered on a target point within medium range. You implant within the minds of your targets the illusion that their skin is rotting away. Wow, large rents are appearing all over their uh, bodies and their internal organs are spilling out into a putrid half liquid mass at their feet. Those who fail to disbelieve phantasmal putrefaction immediately take 1d4 points of wisdom damage. This damage occurs only once. Each round after that, an affected target receives another will save to disbelieve the effect, and targets that fail must succeed at a fortitude save or faint falling asleep as per sleep, except that it isn't a magical sleep effect. Waking up does not end the spell for the target, must continue to attempt will saves to disbelieve, and fortitude saves to avoid fainting each round until the spell ends. <laughs> I, I, that's, uh, that's fun. Yeah, let's take that. It's like a mass kind of CC uh, thing that we can do here. Hmm, okay, so Bull Strength Mass and Cat's Grace Mass, that's all very cool, um, but we don't have Enduring Spells, so that's not really that useful. Acid Fog, not really what I'm thinking. Chain Lightning, now that, you see, this is more like what I'm thinking. 1d6 points of electrical damage per caster level to the primary target after it strikes lightning can arc to a number of secondary targets equal to your caster level. So it does 11d6 and it can strike 11 targets. The secondary bolt, bolt strike uh, one target and deals much damage as the primary bolt. Each target can attempt a reflex saving throw for half damage. Secondary targets must be within 30 feet of the primary target and no target can be struck more than once. Yeah, this is kind of what I was thinking. 
Anything else we got here? Uh, a new hold ability. Nice. You surround yourself with an aroma. No. Cold ice strike. Um, no. Uh, disintegrate. Um, any creature struck by the ray takes 2 points of damage per cast, or 2d6 points of damage per cast level, so 22d6. Any creature reduced to 0 or fewer hit points by the spell is completely disintegrated, leaving behind only a trace of fine dust. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, a creature or object that makes a successful fortitude save is partially affected, taking only 5d6 points of damage. Okay, so fortitude reduces the damage that you take on it. Makes sense. Elemental Assessor. Um, okay. Azata Champions develop the spell. Uh, range Touch Attack, which deals 2d6 points of acid, 2d6 points of cold, 2d6 points of electric, and 2d6 points of fire. This type of energy, uh, the type of energy that does the most damage to the target then persists, dealing another 4d6 points of that damage type per round for 1d4 rounds. This seems like it would go fantastically with a mythic ability that does an extra extra bit of damage uh, whenever you switch element. Uh, the one that Camellia currently has on her weapon, or like that we apply to her weapon. So that would seem fantastic if you had that. If you don't have that, it seems a little gimmicky, but it's probably fine. Uh, Hellfire Ray. Yeah, it seems like more of a uh, Ember type thing. Ah, I remember uh, Sirocco. Because I remember cheesing uh, the uh, Kingmaker game out with this one. So, it does 46 fire damage plus 1 point per cast level to all creatures in the area, knocking them prone. A successful fortitude save halves the fire damage and negates being knocked prone. Any creature that takes damage from Sirocco becomes fatigued or exhausted if already fatigued, um, such as from previous round of exposure to the Sirocco spell. Creatures with the water subtype take a minus 4 penalty on saving throws against the spell and take um, double normal damage. So basically what you would do to cheese with this one is you would cast it on a bunch of enemies and then you just run away and then you'd cast it again and you'd run away. You'd maybe do an obsidian flow on the ground as well and you just keep running away. You, you'd maybe cast it and then shoot them with an arrow so they have to walk through it. All things like that basically is what it's, uh, this, this one would be good for. I don't know if we're going to use it right away, but it could be cool for us. Um, we know what these ones are. Stone to Flesh. Uh, cures Petrification. I imagine that might be useful at some point. Let's see what else we got. Tar Pool. You cover the ground with tar that's... It's, this is basically good... It's basically next level of Grease, right? Yeah, essentially. Grease, Web. It's that line of spells. Transformation is the one that gives you a plus four enhancement bonus to strength, dexterity, con. It's not our thing. Uh, true seeing, uh, we already have on somebody, and then we don't need any of the necromancy ones because it's our um, it's our opposite school. Okay, um, I am going to take um, chain lightning. That sounds perfect. Let's go. Now, Nenio, uh, let's have a look at your spellbook here. There we go, one of those, and then I was thinking something like this. What's Undeath to Death? It uses Diamond Dust, so it's probably not that good for us. The spell slays 1d4 hit dice worth of undead creatures per caster level. Okay, that's cool, and it does scale hit dice wise because it's per caster level. Um, so as we level up, it, this is going to slay more, but... I'm less interested in doing it right now. I think I'd probably just do that one. Okay. Um, also, apologies if there's like odd uh, pops and bangs outside um, or like in the video here. Um, outside my window, it's like fireworks night. So there's a lot of people with fireworks and things, but hopefully it doesn't show up too much. Right. Uh, let's get those. Cool. Right. Camellia. We kind of know what we're doing with you. Yeah, we can do some enduring spells. If they last longer than an hour right now. And we are planning to take the next level of it. So that seems like something we should keep in mind. Uh, beyond that, she's just a melee using character right now. Okay. Are we taking another point in Shaman? Yes, I do this every time. But yes, we are taking another point in Shaman. Uh, although we do need to respec her slightly because of some... Oh, because of nails. But yeah, I'm not too worried about that right now. Trickery and Stealth are great ones for her to have. Let's go with that. Feats. Let's see what we're going to go for. 
So what kind of thing do we want her to be able to do that she can't do right now? Uh, she already does a ton of damage. We could make her tank here. Tank here is probably an okay play. Um, if we made her proficient with tower shields, she should actually use the um, tower shield that we uh, put back in base. But it would then be too heavy for her. But we could in theory do that. Spell penetration. She doesn't tend to use spells on enemies that often. Which is fine. We don't need her to scribe scrolls. Um, yeah, I'm seeing what other things we potentially have for her. Quicken spell is one that could be intriguing for her. But again, she doesn't tend to use spells that often, actually. Not anymore, anyway. Uh, when you make a full attack, each consecutive hit against the same opponent deals extra damage equal to the number of previous consecutive hits you've made against the opponent this turn. I mean, that's like one or two damage. It's not that bad, but it is kind of bad. Um, hmm... Dodge is probably okay for her. I think dodge would be absolutely fine. Uh, nobody would be unhappy with dodge. Combat reflexes as well could be okay. Um, invisible attackers get no advantages hitting you in combat. Um, and every time you miss because of concealment, you can re-roll. Yeah, I think if she hits, um, she does a ton of damage. So I might take blind fight on her. Sure. Sounds useful. And then we get a hex. Okay, what kind of hex are we looking for? Do we have any that were like a higher level hex? No, we have some that are battle only hexes, but none of these were like, we got them at a high level, so that's fine. We could take a meta magic with our secret. Hmm. Like maybe get a quicken here, maybe get uh, something else here. Hmm. That could be okay. I'm just seeing, is there any of these that are like melee only potentially? Um, you can make a creature go into a primal fury. They gain a plus two morale bonus and attack rolls and plus two resistance bonus to saving throws in sphere for a number of rounds equal to the shaman's wisdom modifier. Okay. I mean, that's not the worst one. We could we could definitely do that. That's a plus uh, two morale bonus on attack rolls and a plus two resistance bonus on saving throws for some number of levels. Um... What is our wisdom? I have no idea. But it would still be okay, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of these are kind of like, it would be alright. Um, But none of them are great. Uh, okay, you can do a battle ward. Next time a foe makes an attack roll against the target, the ward activates and grants a plus three deflection bonus to the warded creature's AC. Each subsequent time she's attacked, the deflection bonus decreases by one. Fades when the bonus is reduced to zero or after 24 hours, whichever comes first. At eighth level, its starting bonus is increased to plus four, so that would definitely be applying. Okay. Yeah, maybe we take Battle Ward. And you can only use it once every 24 hours, so it's not something we have to continually reapply. Sure, Battle Ward. Seems good to me. Now, did she get any new spells? Uh, yes, she did get some new spell slots here. Um... Breath of Life could be a good one for her to just have available, just as a thing, potentially. Here, um, we probably don't need two False Life Graters, but it's fine. Uh, anything else in here that might be okay? Any of these, like a met, that's within touch range, a touch attack that uh, does 1d3 constitution damage per round for six rounds. Okay, sure. Let's take that. Anything else here? Nope. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, where we want to go is we want to go all the way back down to Winter Sun. 18 hours. Sure. Travel. It's a long route, but that's okay. We could build more teleporter pads around the place. That's something to think about when we start doing building. Uh, that would be incredibly useful, potentially. Oh, we do have somebody attacking us, actually. We never got a notification, I assume, because he started attacking when we were in um, Winter Sun. Interesting. Um, well, that's fine. We'll just... It will get there when it gets there. Oh, it's midnight. Oh, okay, because it's midnight, we can remove these guys, right? Uh, yes. Okay, but we also got whatever this thing is. The relic will be augmented. 
Okay. I don't know what that means. Oh, there we go. The fate of the Soul Shear. When Staunton Vane turned to evil, his battle hammer was reforged into a glaive named Soul Shear and charmed by a demoness named Manago. Now this weapon is in the Crusader's hands, and only they can decide whether to use its power. So we can cleanse it. Uh, can I see? Oh, right, right. We do have leave it as it is. So that's 4 to 13, and it has a bunch of stuff on it. Um, okay. Gives you two uh, additional daily uses of Lay on Hands, Fervor, and Channel Energy class abilities if you possess them. So we get more Channel Energy. Uh, so that's three Adamantine. Three Adamantine, that's fine. When it kills, it summons a demon. Okay, yeah. Or Charm Soul Shear? Uh, when wielding this, your mount gets a plus three bonus to all saving throws and a plus three bonus to CMD. Oh, did they intend this to be a Sela weapon <laughs> by any chance? Hmm. I kind of like Cleanse. Cleanse seems useful. We do have channel. We do have it on a channel energy character. I kind of assumed that they would make. They made it to be a um, Soasil weapon, but this one definitely seems to be suggesting you could use it on Sela. Um. Yeah, I guess the effect is leaving it as it is. There's no real benefit to it for us. It's kind of just. Like, it might summon a demon, which is, like, okay-ish. Or, you get two uses of channel energy. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll cleanse it. Sure. The fall of Staunton Vane is a tragedy and a disgraceful page in the history of the Crusaders. The priests have purified his once glorious weapon through prayers and rites. Cool. A visitor from the past. Ooh. This option is unavailable because you did not choose the path of the Azata, the bottom one. Interesting. A small crevasse opened in the middle of Dresden. Then a tiny, sickly old man climbed out. Coughing heavily, he introduced himself as a spirit of the Sarkorian land and thanked the Crusaders for their struggle. He wishes to help the Crusade and is offering the commander a choice. He can either open up a metal deposit, uh, open up the metal deposits that sleep beneath the earth not far from the fortress, or grow lush forests on top of them where wild game will make its home. Okay. Um. So we can... Oh, let's see what we got. So we've got material points income increases by 5 for 30 days. So that is 150 material points. Okay. Ro um, all units gain the robust feat. 2% max HP. Okay. That's not very impressive. Uh, I'm just thinking about some of the units we have. We had one that had like 150 health. 2%. We're, we're, we're talking 3 HP. That is garbage. Although, maybe it stacks to become really good later, depending on whether HP suddenly flies up at some point. But right now, it's garbage. Uh, convince the spirit to help you with everything he can. You get 100 material points and all units gain the healthy feat. Um, but it's evil. Okay. 1% to max HP. Okay, I'm going to choose the metal deposits because material points are by far the uh, rarest thing for us. Upon hearing the commander's choice, the tiny old man smiled and melted into the earth. Soon after, scouts reported that several ore-filled chasms were spotted near Dresden. This metal, once mined, can be used to forge weapons. Wonderful. Right, uh, campaign? Actually, leave this map mode? Yeah, good. we'll do it on the other map mode. There we go, right. So I've got Alley Battalion and Boring Squad. Boring Squad's first move is to go up here. Head this way. Oh, also quick save while we do it. I, I wish you a lot of luck. Also, the... Uh, the other benefit about having this squad go out and do things by themselves is that we're actually leveling this uh, general, which previously we weren't, which is quite nice. Right, head up this way. Let's see how this goes. Okay, uh, marksman. You can kill two to three, five to six, zero, one. How many of them are there? I can't see. Uh, nope. Nope. No way of finding out. How There's 11. Okay, at the top. I think killing 2 to 3 of these guys is okay. I think killing 5 to 6 of these guys is okay. 
I'm doing... Which one am I doing the most damage to? I'm doing the most damage to these guys as well. Shoot them. Nice. Now your job... Ooh, you can do three to nine. You could potentially kill them, which would be nice. Um... I think I'm going to attack these guys like this. Okay. Shoot them. Right. We killed the fire elementals, which is great. Your job is to currently walk here. And just hit them. And try and block. It didn't work. All of them are dead. Okay, and that's our entire inf <laughs> infirmary size. Okay, that's not good. Uh, I was hoping we'd kill one of them. It's okay. Round here. It's a lot of damage. Our infirmary is now full. Started to feel like we might have a problem with this army, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, stab here. And here. That's fine. Attack. Um, round here. Stab. Kills one. Guaranteed. We get another turn. Kills another. Guaranteed. Okay. This is fine. Um, attack. Okay. Wonderful. It being dead is great. Um, now, our ability to hurt these guys is pretty low. How much health does one have? Can I see that? Uh, inspect. They have 400 health. Okay. Um... Well, that's not great. Attack him. Okay, I'm gonna have to get you to shoot. I guess we have to go for the water elementals first. Yeah. That's fine. Just mine our way through these armies. Alright, attack. Killed one. At least they're not doing very much to us. Or at least to that one. Um, keep attacking. Just mine away at, at one of their armies. There we go. We killed one. In theory, the more we kill, the better it's going to get for us as well. But that's okay. I should probably try using this as well. Sure. How many rounds is this on? One round. Okay. We're still losing troops quicker than they are. It's not great. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. We are going to kill another one this turn. Just keep mining. Alright, we got one. We're down to six. Shoot. And attack. It's going to take us a long number of turns to get through them. That's okay. We're getting through the water elemental, which apparently is quite happy. Sorry, the, the earth elemental is probably quite happy hitting our dwarves right now. So we're fine to just keep uh, shooting the water elementals who are actually doing damage. Okay. Keep attacking. We got, an we got another one dead. Nice. Keep shooting. And the more that we kill... The less damage output they have. Okay. Didn't get another one. This 100% will. Nice. Attack. Oh, you got another one. I'm <laughs> it's so low. Okay. Ooh, now we have a chance of kill. Hey, we, we got it as well. There's only two water elementals left. Just keep shooting. You keep hitting the Earth Elemental. Get there eventually. Okay. Still haven't actually killed the Shield Bearer. I can see a world where Shield Bearers work. Like, if you manage to, like, 
hold an hold an um, army attacking you like this. The problem is, one, most of them don't just stand there and attack the shield bearers, and two, um, like you need to actually have damage behind to make this work. I just think maybe fights are too fast for, I, I, I'm saying it in this context, which seems ridiculous, but I think maybe fights are too fast for them to work because um, if you have damage, fights won't last this long usually, so they won't work. I don't know. It's a bit weird. Anyway, we're gonna keep shooting this army for about a thousand years, but that's okay. We do actually kill one eventually. These guys do actually do damage, which helps a lot. Having to do 400 for a kill is not great. But if you can do like 100, you're doing 50 a hit on average. But if you could do 100, that would be better. Um, attack. We are doing about 100 a turn. So it's going to take us about 16 more turns to kill it. Apparently this is turn 101, it says there. In the bottom right hand corner. Quite a few turns here. Stay in attack from exactly the same arm, uh, angle. We cannot allow our archers to die. But I mean, here's the thing. Look how long this earth elemental has been hitting our uh, shield bearers. And how little they've lost in terms of numbers of troops. That's kind of the benefit that they have, I think. But the problem is, obviously, you need them to just stay and attack them. I, don't, I have no idea what the AI is here. And why it's like I have to attack this one. But whatever. It's fine. But we'll go with it. Just keep attacking. We'll get there eventually. It's doing six damage. It might kill one by the end here. All right, 23, 45. Okay, 24. 24, 52. Chance of a kill on the next one of the um, Mounted units turn, I think. Yeah, not even chance, a guaranteed kill. They're now only doing three damage a turn to our shield bearers. I really hope we get um, the 10 really good units back. That'd be ideal, I think. Or I hope they're all wiped out, one or the other. I hope we get them all back or they're all gone. I don't want to be left with like one of those units that I can't do anything with. That would be annoying. Anyway, keep attacking. E another 55 damage. Okay, getting there. That was a chance of a kill, which means any attack from now on has a chance. There we go. And now, all we have to do is kill this last one. And they're doing one damage a turn, which might be the uh, minimum damage that you can do. Well, I suppose actually you could do zero if you had damage resistance. I don't know if the dwar uh, if the uh, shield bearers do. Keep telling them the dwarves, but that's not really the only thing they are. Yeah, they have one damage reduction, so technically they could be doing zero damage. Um, but they're not. But technically they could. Hey, that's fantastic. I accidentally moved. Alright, it didn't mess everything up. That's fine. Attack. Move. Still a chance of a kill on that one. As a guaranteed kill. I said that was a guaranteed kill. Okay, there we go. We did it. We got seven. Uh, seven's okay. We did lose four. Uh, 39 of those and 36 of those. That's not ideal. Hopefully we leveled up our general. That's kind of my main thing. Chasing elementals away to their home planes, crusaders find a huge crystal filled with magical energy. It appears that it was imbued with the elemental force many years ago in convoy and convoy to Dresden but never arrived. Its guards have perished and the crystal itself, a powerful vessel of magical essence, has been drawing elemental spirits um, year after year. Cool. So what we got there is we got a um, hundred energy, which is very nice, and we got a level up for our general, which is great. So crushing offense. All units in the army have a plus one bonus to attack per level of this feat. 
actually really good, especially as this army is, has quite large tr uh, numbers of troops, and would give us a specific type of uh, unit that we should put in that army. 7% infirmary size isn't that good. Close combat training. All infantry units have a plus 2 uh, bonus to AC attack and defense. Ooh, uh, sorry, AC attack and damage, not defense. Um, that's really good. That gives the shield bearers a plus two to attack. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take that one. I think that one's really good for us, potentially. Um, doesn't make the squad good enough to take on this level six army, but you know, it's a really good buff. Right, I'm going to do a quick save here. I'm just going to see what this path is like. Okay, so I think it heads down to that army eventually, but that's okay. Right, other one, Alley Battalion. Um, Dresden and left, I guess. Now that that one's going to be more difficult. How many points do we have? We have uh, fifty. We could try it, but they do have. Um, the problem is they do have the ones that are immune to fire, which is kind of a major issue for us. We could also go over here and try and get these ones. Yeah, that's probably our better plan. That's 500... Wait, 555 in here? Oh, but cultists don't have very much health. Okay. But still, 555? Wow. Okay. Head down. Head down. We'll just send these guys across. I'm probably not doing anything with this army this turn, I would imagine. But we'll see. Just a little bit over there. Okay, cool. Right, back on to this one. And down to Winter Sun. There is someone on the road. Get ready. It's a random encounter. Not a um, you've been attacked encounter. But it might be a you've been attacked encounter. Uh. Okay. Well, let's first of all check that our party is fine. Uh, Sila. Mount. Uh, Mount Horse. Cool. That seems good as a, as a first step. Um, you actually want to be we want it to be something like this instead. Yeah. Let's move. Set ourselves up. Uh, do I want to buff or not? It's, it's actually an interesting question whether we want to buff. Rely uh, the first me. thing I want to do is I want to use lay on hands here because that removes our fatigue. Uh, I guess there's no reason oh, the not to buff. Because even if I rest, I'm just gonna, like, yeah, even if I rest, we'll still need to, uh, like, it will give us our spell slots back, so we could buff then anyway. Um, I have noticed that the, um, cursor is a little bit broken. That's fine. Okay. Uh, one for you. One for you. And one for you. Right, strength-wise, you can have one. You can have one. You can have one. You can have one. Uh, that's fine. Spell ri well, let's do these first. Crusader's Edge, horse. And then Sila. The Minde. Camellia. This is only melee weapons, right? Yes, this is only melee weapons. Uh, then we can do this to the horse. Sila. Camellia. The Minde. Then we have three, so it's the Minde. Uh, Sila. And Camellia. So we're out of those ones for just now. Uh, where are we next? Eight. Yeah. Uh, Camellia. Sila. Now, is this... Attack rolls and... Yeah, okay. Horse. And the Minde. Right, so they're all out. Next one is these ones, I guess. Yeah. 
protection from fire, acid, cold. Sure. Then we got some spell resistances. Uh, this one's not for the horse. I'm fairly certain I just cast that on the horse. Yup. All right, that one's for Sila. Just use the pictures at the bottom, it's easier. Uh, for those two anyway. Uh, then I guess you. Right, and now we're at buffs. Nenio, you got any? No, you need bars that need redone, but that's okay. Minute per level, uh, we can probably avoid doing that. You? Now for you, uh, th that one, definitely. Uh, anything else? Ram per level, minute per level, 10 minute per level. So you could apply bark skin to Sila. The horse. And yourself. Anything else that we need to apply here? Uh, battle ward. Apply to Sila. Just checking that. That one also might not stack with everything else. We just applied this one, didn't we? We did. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I think that might be it. No, I need to use my animal focus to give myself extra decks. Okay. Is that it? I believe that is it. Okay. We are now buffed. Cool. Wait, do you I'll have anything? Yes, ready. you have this one. Um, and then everything else on yours is rounds. Yes, yes, it's all rounds. Cool. Sila, you actually do have us. something. You have Aura of Greater Courage. Uh, and the Lay Poison Communal. Cool. Quick save. It takes a very long time to buff up. That's okay. And then it's going to be like, this isn't even an enemy. Oh no, they're enemies. Hello. Baphomet Cultist Cleric. The cultist smiles sweetly at you. Well, well, what have we here? The freshly minted commander straight from Dresden. Here is what's going to happen, commander. You will give us specimen 367. We will bring back to Iz, to Master Bladesmith, and no one will get hurt. If you refuse, well, prepare to die. Oh, this is Finian. Bladesmith, is it? Ah, uh, then I know who you creeps are. You're from the same lot that slaughtered my party and then tortured me for some dark experiments. Commander, just give the order, I'll wipe the floor with them. I have an old score to settle. I actually don't even remember who has Finian right now. Anyway, specimen three what? Yes, yes, the specimen, the sentient weapon that was taken from us. A cheap ploy by the Crusaders. Don't try to deny it, we know you have it. A sentient weapon? This is huge. If you really have one, Commander, keep it for yourself. These lowlifes don't deserve it. Who is this bladesmith? A great artisan and a teacher who renounced his name and past to serve the weaponsmith's craft. His demonic blades never break. His magic arrows never miss their mark. His creations are incredible, although the piece you have in your possession is still far from perfect. It was not supposed to fall into the hands of outsiders. We want it back. Um... I'm not giving Finian to you. Yeah, definitely not. Well then, we'll have to take the specimen ourselves. Let's show these scumbags what's what, Commander, to battle. They will break against All right. our resolve. Well. Little casting on their side. Um, let's see here. I wanna kill the Evoker if we can. Yeah, do a full attack on the Evoker. I will resist! Nice! That's what I'm talking about, damage-wise. Oh, something over there shooting us. Okay, uh, your move here is smite, and then attack. I guess I should just attack normally, because then the horse will move and she gets her full round of attack, but still. Uh, that's fine. Here... Hmm. Maybe a little burning arc onto you? Sure. Let's try that. Very good damage. Okay, like it. 
one of those, one of those. Uh, we can't quite charge into that one, but we could charge into this cultist. Ooh, and there's the invisible one at the back. There's more cultists somewhere. Ah, there's archers who are hiding, I see. Yeah, there's more archers who are hiding. They're attacking us, but they have to roll a 20 to hit. Prayer went out, which is a negative to us as well, but that's okay. Uh, Darren, you actually really don't have a lot to do. I'm going to move you close enough that you could heal next turn if needed. Uh, and then I'm going to get you to shoot. Out of my sight. That was pretty good. Right. Activate spirit weapon uh, enchantment. Yeah, that's fine. Followed by... Uh, I don't have charge on. Oh, I have it down here. Okay. Weird. Uh, attack. Very nice damage. Conjure, uh, conjured some wolves. That's fine. Cultist used shield of faith and moved in. Arushale kills the conjurer. Nope. 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 Four misses due to concealment in a row. Very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm going to move you to here. And then I'm going to get you to uh, attack. Take you. <laughs> I like the backswing attack, uh, like sword hit she did there. Right. Um, burning arc. Hey, it hit the conjurer and it hit one of the wolves as well. Nice. Uh, we can walk straight up and hit it, I suppose. Forward. See whether that works. Hey, nice damage. Can't actually hit anyone. Darren, kill him. Missed due to concealment. Okay, fair enough. Camellia, stab. Cut you wide open. Very good damage. Wolves are now doing stuff. Not a lot, though. Uh, shoot. They all died. Not because of the AoE damage, I believe, but because we killed the Conjurer. Uh, this then means that I can charge over here. Um, and... Um, maybe move up and then see what we can do from this range. Could do another Burning Arc. I think we're fine just shooting, though. Right, we can then charge here. Well, we're, we're out of range of even charge. Okay. Well, let's move forward then. And then, uh... I guess we'll move forward again. That's fine. Had to switch to melee. Took some shots at us. Shoot this one. Oh, thank you for nice. Me. Kill it. Very good damage. And then they exploded. With a crit. Okay. So we got a quest thing to talk to Finny in there. Grab all of that. I just remembered there's one oh, other me. thing I need to do on Nenio's t um, in Nenio's thing for leveling up, but that's okay. Just check over here. Yeah, I think we cleared this map. I don't think there's anything in it apart from the fight location. Okay, cool. March on. Right. Uh, the other thing I need to do for Nenio is go through all of the spells and see whether we've got any that we can... Uh, well, any that we can teach her. Yeah, so we can, in theory, teach her things like this. That is much more convenient than having to right-click on all of them. Yeah, that, that is actually so much more convenient. Love it. Oh, wait. You can't learn spells that way, can you? No. No, no, you can't. Right, um... I, I wish to talk to the blade. Oh, is Ember using it currently? Maybe? I don't know. Just looking at what it is. Start dialogue. Want to chat? I'm always up for a chinwag. Um, I found court, uh, cultist reports in their test. They say you were used to kill crusaders. Oh, we found that in the temple, but we'll do that later. Um, we got ambushed by cultists who spoke of some bladesmith. I suspect you might know him. Finian's tone is grim. All too well. He was the one who tortured me. I don't know what specimens they wanted from you. Maybe they thought I had stolen something from them. Wait, I just remembered something. His voice turned hopeful. That bladesmith's workshop was just outside Is, right by the walls. If, Gorm willing, we're ever in those parts, I'll beat the hell out of that scumbag for all he did to me. 
Ha, finding those cultists was a stroke of luck. I'm ready to leap into battle right now. Just say the word. It's like I can feel this newfound strength. When you go to Iz, make sure to bring me along. I wonder whether that actually means he's got stronger. Anyway, I found cultist reports in their tests. Uh, they say you were used to kill crusaders. What? You must have the wrong guy. I've never been friends with cultists. I would have remembered something like that. Maybe they caught some other pathfinder and bent him to their will. Not me. I would have I would have remembered. I wouldn't have lied to you. I, I would have remembered. Okay, so that's given us a quest thing for him. Uh, I assume it's under companions. It is not. Uh, I'm trying to find it, actually. Yeah, so it's none of those. Did I miss it somewhere? Oh, no, there we go. Finian's Awakening isn't companion quests. Yeah, uh, we do not have sufficient forces to enter the area. The only option is to wait for an opportune moment. Okay, cool. That's fine. So is he actually stronger now? Let's say I wanted to make a long a long sword, right? It is now brilliant energy heart seeker enhancement plus three. Uh what does that even mean? Is is a plus three? That's so much better than long sword of right. Yeah, okay. Well I'm gonna equip him for just now. Uh let's see what it actually means. A brilliant energy weapon and Ignores non-living matter. Armor and shield bonuses to AC, including any enhancement bonuses to that armor, do not count against it because the weapon passes through armor. Dexterity, deflection, dodge, natural armor, and other bonuses still apply. A brilliant energy weapon cannot harm undead, constructs, or objects. Cannot harm undead, constructs, or objects. Huh. So definite negatives with it. Okay. A heart seeker weapon ignores the mischance for concealment against most living targets, uh, though the attack must still target the proper square. This special ability does not apply against aberrations, oozes, plants, outsiders with the elemental subtype, or any creature that's specifically noted to lack a heart. Okay. And then we get a plus three enhancement bonus. That is better, I think. Let me have a look. So long sort of right. It does less damage, okay, uh, but it does an extra 1d3 against Chaotic, so that would do 8 to, um, that would do 8 to 17 uh, as its range. Uh, the other long, oh, because he's in here. The other long sword does 9 to 16, so a, a less high top end, but overall it's got better low ends, which is good. Um... And, this weapon can tear the soul of a living creature. Whenever it lands a hit, it deals an additional 1d6 force damage. So it's got an additional 1d6 on that as well, which means it's actually doing 10 to 22 damage. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that's not because it's Heartseeker, is it? That's its own thing. That's its own thing. Okay, and it ignores the mischance for concealment. This is a much better weapon. Cool. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, that was, we got an upgrade. Let's leave. So, now it's time to go back to Winter Sun. Demon army approaching. Yeah, oh, it's over here. That's fine. Ah, I like how it now highlights it. I don't think it did that previously. Anyway, it's going to move, like, up here. So we're probably going to meet it somewhere around there. Wait, are we able to move these guys again? Or did... Or is this the same day? Same day. Okay. Back to the other one. Winter Sun, let's go. Um, you are encumbered. Yeah, it's because you're all right. You now need to rest. That's okay. We do a nine-hour rest, which is actually very good for us. She's not able to do this one. Um, can you do alchemy? You can. Wonderful. So with her doing alchemy, uh, it says she can't do hearty meal. Not enough regents. Oh, I need purifying stuff. Oh, I guess we don't need any alchemy actually. Okay, interesting. I should be aware of that. And get you to do the scroll of uh, of restoration with Nenio's help. Yeah, this should this is a hundred percent chance of success. Wonderful, cool. So they'll do that. I need to buy purifying solution at some point, but then the rest are auto passes. Cool. Sila, a ball gown would suit you very nicely, or any dress. 
Are you kidding? All that lace on me? <laughs> It'd be like putting a saddle on a sow. It'd be enough to make the cats laugh. <laughs> okay. So eight hours passed, which is nice. Demon army approaches. Okay. That's fine. Let's go in. Yes. I want to enter the location. Uh, then we need to re- buff slightly but not completely any hour-long buffs need to be redone every other buff should still be on yeah that that's correct all the other buffs are still on for another 13 hours except for crusader's edge crusader's edge is not on because it's a new weapon okay uh, which means he actually gets to keep all of his spells now i could do protection from energies and things but i think he's actually fine because there aren't really any energy types you around here I'm worried me. about. Now, is your false life still on? Yeah, that's fine. Um, is there anything else that you apply to yourself which is a shorter amount of time? This one? Uh, let me have a look at her here. Dex, that is not applied. Okay, so we will apply that. Okay, so she now gets the extra Dex. Uh, who's next? Is there anything else on you here that's like per hour or something? Arc skin? 10 minutes per level? That should still be applied to Sila? It is. Okay. Apparently that doesn't, st uh, doesn't stack with the amulet of natural armor, of course. That's fine. We could bark skin on yourself and Naminde, I suppose. Yeah, and on Naminde. Uh, and on the horse, I guess. You need to mount the horse. Freedom of movement is still applied. We should move. reapply this, although I'm gonna have to reapply it when the game reloads. Aura of greater courage is 10 minutes per level, so we're gonna need to reapply that to everybody. Okay, I think now. Oh, the other thing is the hour-long uh, delay poison. Yeah, we might as well use your one for just now. Okay. Pause the game. Quick save. And I think that is a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching. Next time, we're going to head back in here. No doubt the spectre is still around, so we'll need to kill it. And then we can explore the bottom half of this map, which is a settlement. So there's probably going to be people to speak to and all of that sort of stuff. This is a huge area to explore. I love it. Right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.